So let's take a look. On my G drive, I have a folder called www, and it's full of files. And this hard drive is almost full. So I'm going to move these files to my I drive. On my iDrive, I have the same exact folder called www, so I'm going to be copying from G Drive www to iDrive www. I'm just simply going to move a lot of files off that external. To make this all happen, I'm going to use a tool called RoboCopy. RoboCopy is a command line tool built into your operating system, and it allows a powerful methodology of moving, copying, uh, synchronizing it's just an amazing tool I'm actually for your benefit I'm using what's called easy robocopy which simply just opens up all the switches and arguments of that command line tool robocopy is a powerful command line tool and it's a favorite of the network administrators so using this graphical user interface let's come up to the source my source is G Drive www that's where my files are at and my destination is going to be the iDrive www and I'm simply going to move you can see that I've got the copy type I'm going to move those files I'm also going to move folders and notice I'm going to move subdirectories even the empty ones so I'm going to move everything that's in that G Drive and that www folder over to the iDrive www subdirectory I'm also going to come over here to the source area and I'm going to check and I'm going to include read only, hidden, system, encrypted, and compressed. So anything that's over here in G Drive is going to be moved. I am also asking the command to copy data, attributes, and file timestamps. I could include security, ownership, and auditing. In this case, I'm not going to. Now when it runs the command line, I've asked it to run the verbose, so it's going to display everything in the command line once we execute this command line tool. What's really cool about this graphical user interface to this command line tool is as I check these boxes, down here it's actually building the command line with all the necessary switches and arguments. Another area that I want to bring your attention to is multi-threading which is why I'm using this command. Very rarely can you adjust how many threads a process runs, but in this tool we can actually adjust threads. So here I've enabled multi-threading and I could leave it to default, say four, I believe four threads are default, and we'll start the utility off with four threads. It will take a look at its performance and impact. Now I'm ready to go. I've got all the settings that I want. I've got source destination, multi-threading. Down here is an execute button. Makes it very easy and handy. I can hit execute and you can see it launches the command line. Remember I set it up for verbose mode and we are now copying files from G to I. Now I've launched task manager and we can take a look and see that easy robocopy is one of the processes that's running we can see that it's really not hitting the CPU. So how is it doing all of this copying and really not impacting CPU? And the, the trick here is that Easy Robocopy is really using the operating system. I've checked up here the performance box and now we can really look at the disk. You can see G Drive is really hammering. This is where we're reading from and I Drive is where we're writing from. So Task Manager gives us some idea of what's going on, but let's go take under the hood and look at more. Now I've launched uh, Resource Monitor, and let's scroll down. I'm going to check RoboCopy since that's running, and we can see it's got some threads running. And notice I, I selected four, and it's running between five and seven. That may be default. Let's scroll down here. I'm going to also find another process. We're looking at processes now. And I'm going to check system. The reason why is because RoboCopy is really using the kernel. That's what it really is doing. And we'll see this as we go. Now remember, we're reading from G. We're writing to I. So as we scroll down here to the disks area, we're seeing G, a lot of reads going on here. G is being read. Notice there's very little writing going on in G because we're 
moving files from G to I. Let's scroll down. I, we can see writing, very little reading. We can see all that. It all makes sense because we understand what's going on. Now I'm going to come over here to the disk area, and here's where it really gets interesting. I'm going to come over here and I can see I've checked RoboCopy to look at RoboCopy and System. And I'm going to come down here and we're going to take a look at what's going on. First of all, notice under I, we're having a lot of writes and that's exactly what we expect. Over on the G side though, we're seeing heavy reading. And that's what we're expecting. We're expecting a lot of reading on G, a lot of writing on I. Now I want your attention over here. Over here is disk G. I want you to look at the Q length. Q length is 5. Remember, any time your Q length on a drive is above 4, it's pretty well saturated. As we slide down to drive I, right here you see again, we're, we're saturating both of these drives. We're hammering them. So anytime you see a Q length of a disk and it's above four, you're really pretty much saturated. You're really, you've got um, threads that are waiting for the disk to become available. They simply cannot execute enough of the necessary threads on that drive. So here we see two drives that are really saturated. Now I'm, I want you to look over here also. We can look at response time. We're hammering these disks. So iDrive has a response time of 6, 6, and 5, and G has a response time of 4, and sometimes 3. So the writing is more intensive than the reading. And these response times I want you to pay attention to because they're going to change here as we add more threads. Now I pulled my command line up and you can see we're still rocking away. We're still copying and I've got it in verbose mode and we're still hammering away at these disks. We're reading on G, copying to I. Now I want you to think about this. What's going to happen when I come up to RoboCopy and I kill the process? What's going to happen? Do you think it's just going to stop instantly? Well, watch the behavior of your disks. What it's going to do is one by one, as files are copied over successfully, it will stop one thread at a time only when the thread has completely done its job. So let's go ahead and kill RoboCopy. I'm going to end the process. And so right now, we have killed the thread, or we sent the request to kill the thread. But if you'll notice over here in the disk, we're still writing right now. But one by one, as the files are transferred over and completely copied, then each thread is ended and, and it ends in a very graceful manner. We just don't pull the plug on a process. So as the threads are told to suspend, they look at all their activity they make sure that everything is cleaned up, the floor is clean, the tabletops are wiped off. It doesn't just kill anything. It makes sure that everything's in order before all the threads suspend and the process comes to an end. And there we go. So when I go back and look at my disk, my, my process has been terminated. And you can see that the master file table is still being accessed. There's still work on the master file table as it's kind of cleaning up some things. So there's a little bit of activity on iDrive, not much. It's pretty well, the process is terminated, the disks are doing their cleanup work, uh, the normal NTFS type activity is being done. All right, so let's kick it up a notch. I'm gonna go back to my Easy RoboCopy interface and I'm going to enable up to 60 threads this time. So notice it's adjusted my command line down here as I've modified the graphical, it's modified the command line. And so now I'm going to run that same tool against uh, the two, two hard drives, this time with 60 threads at the same time. Let's go. And you can see it's off and running. Now let's go look at the behavior. This is very interesting. 
Now I'm looking at the overview tab. I'm looking at Robocopy and System. I've checked both of those, so I'm really filtering out these two processes. And you can see I'm reading from G. And if you'll notice, a lot of files are being copied at the same time. Look at all these G files because I'm running a lot more threads. But I want you to look at that. We're all reading over here on G. And as I scroll down, we're going to see the writing to I. Look at a lot more I files are being copied simultaneously because we initiated this move with a lot more threads. But I want you to notice here, look at the response time. Whoa, G Drive is totally saturated and it cannot keep up with all the threads that are requesting to read. In other words, we're copying 60 some files or probably 49, 50 files, trying to read them off that disk and it simply is bogging that disk down. So let's go look at the disk now. And you can see the response time is horrible. Let's go look at the queue time on G. A hundred. Oh my goodness. So we are just overwhelming. Look at this flat line here, this blue flat line on the G drive. It is just hammered. It literally cannot read enough files. Notice down in I. I is still fine because the problem is that we're trying to read so many files from G that it literally is just bogged down. So this is a beautiful uh, view of processes and threads. We see the real life impact on hardware subsystems as we analyze something as simple as a robocopy move from one disk to another. So let's go up. We're going to terminate this robocopy and we should see a very graceful, remember when we end the process, the process is in charge of making sure all the threads, in this case the moving of files, are properly done, everything is tidy, everything is neat, everything is completed before that process completes. So let's go ahead and end the process. It will take much longer this time because we have a lot more threads going on. So I'm going to end the process, and if you'll watch the disks, in fact, if you'll watch this list here of disk activity, as they completely read and write, they will start terminating one after the other. You can see already, you can see the graph. We're starting to already see that impact. we still got a lot of activity to be done, and we're knocking those out, but you can see as we get in time, it's going to be where there's no more reading, no more writing, because the process and all the threads have terminated and finished, moved their files, and now we can kill the process. I'm going to move to overview so we can watch it. We can see it's in the terminated mode. It still has not stopped, even though we've asked it to terminate. It still is going to clean up its threads. So we're going to wait for it to finish all of its disk activity. It's going to take us a little bit longer because we've got a lot more threads copying files. All right, so let's take a look at the same thing. We're running RoboCopy. This time we're going to use Process Explorer. I've set up the um, Robo, Easy RoboCopy, and I've just enabled the default number of threads. So we're running just the default, and you can see we're still copying away. And this time let's take a look at it in Process Explorer. We do get a little bit different view in Process Explorer. First of all, we see that Easy RoboCopy launched a command line, and it launched a subprocess or a child process. And then the command line.exe launched a shell, an executable shell, and then RoboCopy, the command itself, is running. And you can see it's hitting the CPU between 7 and 10% utilization. That's pretty good. I also have a column called Threads. We can see that run, right now it's running about nine threads with just the default, with no additional threads. We can come up here in the I.O. area and we can see that there's a lot of I.O. traffic. Over here is disk. I'm going to hit the system information and let's take a look at that. When we look at I.O. in Process Explorer, it really is a combination of network traffic, disk traffic. 
So right now, notice there's very little network traffic. I'm really not doing anything on the network. But over here on the disk, we can see our reads and our writes. And if you'll notice for the most part, your, your reads and writes will be pretty close because we're moving files from one side from G drive to I drive. So that's kind of what you're seeing right here. The summary as we mouse over, notice as I mouse over, I can see Robocopy pop up in the mouse over. So it allows me very quickly to take a look at who's causing IO traffic. Same thing down in the disk. I can see that Robocopy is primarily responsible for the disk traffic. So let's go ahead and kill Robocopy and we'll kick it off with some more. So I'm going to kill the process and it will finish up all the necessary things. You can see down here it's still running. Even though we've asked it to die, it has not stopped. It's got to clean up a lot of its activity. So we'll watch that finish up and then we'll launch Robocopy again, this time with a lot more threads and we should see a lot more activity this time. Notice as I mouse over the Robocopy.exe, it shows you the command line. So that's very cool. You can actually see the command switches and arguments that I used to launch Robocopy. We're going to again turn on Process Explorer, I mean uh, Robocopy, and view it with Process Explorer. This time I'm going to put 30 threads, and we're going to look at the behavior of threads as we analyze this with Process Explorer. So I'm going to execute, and you can see we're off and running again. Now let's go take a look at Process Explorer. One will come down. We'll see that Easy Robocopy launched a command line shell, a second process, and that process launched another process, and that process launched Robocopy. So we're going to go to the properties, and I'm going to go to, in fact, you cannot see that. I'm going to slide this up a little bit so that you can. I'm going to right mouse click, go to properties, and we actually can begin to look at the I.O. read, the I.O. writes. We can really take a look at what that process is doing. I'm going to look at performance, and we can see again read and write speeds that's generated by that process. We can look at disk and network, and notice network. Really have no network because we're really not doing anything, but disk, we're definitely hammering disks. Another important is threads. Here we can look at each thread and notice the TID. That's your thread ID, just like your process ID. And we can look at every single thread that's running and how it's impacting the CPU. So if you have a misbe misbehaving thread, you can actually suspend a thread. So I could right mouse click and actually suspend any thread that I thought would, would be a, a problem. Now be very careful within a, within a process when you start doing things like kill a thread or suspend a thread because the behavior of the process is probably unpredictable. So when you do that, you're taking a lot of risks. In this case, we can look and see that these, each of these threads are running and we launched quite a few. Let's come over here so we can see and we do. We have over 31 threads running in this process. And we can see each of those threads and its impact on the CPU. This is amazing. This is really cool, allowing us to see thread action within the process. Really take a look at it as Process Explorer opens it up to let us